T-cells play a very important role in the adaptive immune response, our ability to recognize specific antigens on foreign invaders like pathogens. In this video, we're gonna look at how they develop. So let's do it. Hey, this is Leslie Samuel here from Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. Let's talk about how T cells are made. T cells start their developmental journey in the bone marrow. As we spoke about in our previous video on hemopoiesis, we start with hemopoietic stem cells that goes through a lot of division and differentiation to become all of the cell types in the blood. In that process, they can differentiate into a myeloid stem cell or a lymphoid stem cell. And it's from the lymphoid stem cell that we ultimately get the T cells. Now for a detailed review on that process, check out my video on hemopoiesis. I'll link to that in the description below. Okay, so the T cells start the development and differentiation in the bone marrow. However, they don't finish the process there. In fact, when they leave the bone marrow, they're immature thymocytes that need to go to the thymus to be trained so that they can mature into fully functioning T cells. It's like they're training to be military fighters, but before they can go off to fight, they first need to go to boot camp to go through some training and just weed out those that just don't cut it. That's pretty much what's happening here. The boot camp happens in the thymus and every T cell won't make it. Let's look at how this happens. The thymus secretes certain chemicals that act as chemokines. Those chemicals attract the immature T cells so that they can go through the process of maturation. Once they get to the thymus, that's when the magic happens. It starts in the outer layer of the thymus, the cortex. These immature T cells don't have T cell receptors on their surfaces, nor do they have two very important molecules, CD4 and CD8. They are considered what we call double negatives. No CD4, no CD8, that's two negatives, so we call them double negatives. The chemicals that are released by the thymus will stimulate the T cells to produce T cell receptors, or TCRs. So we have our T cell receptors now. The next thing they will do is stimulate the T cells to produce CD4 and CD8. All of this is accomplished by activating the genes that are responsible for producing these things. Now we have T cell receptors as well as both CD4 and CD8. The cells are now considered double positive. Now we need to see if the CD4 and CD8 will bind to two molecules on the thymic epithelial cells. CD8 is supposed to recognize and bind to MHC class one molecules, and CD4 is supposed to recognize and bind to MHC class two molecules. If for some reason they don't recognize them, they are killed by apoptosis. They're no good, so let's get rid of them. If they do bind to the MHC molecules, they can move on to the next step. This is called positive selection. If it binds, we want them, so we keep them. From here, the T cell will then go a little deeper and move to the medulla of the thymus. Now this is where the next step takes place. The T cells are then exposed to self antigens. Now, we don't want T cells to recognize and bind to antigens that are supposed to be present in the body. So here's how we accomplish this. Self antigens from other parts of the body are brought to the thymus by antigen presenting cells. If a T cell receptor binds to and recognizes the self antigen, they're targeted for destruction and killed by apoptosis. This is called negative selection. We're killing off T cells that recognize antigens of our own body tissues because we don't want T cells to start attacking our own tissues. Well, at least not under normal circumstances, that would be bad. Okay, so we've had positive selection for T cells having the CD4 and CD8 molecules that will successfully recognize MHC class one and two. We had negative selection so that we only get T cells that won't recognize our normal body cells. The next thing that happens is that the T cells are then exposed to other body cells. Now, some of those cells will have MHC1 molecules on their surface, and some will have MHC2 molecules on their surfaces. If a T cell's CD4 molecule happens to bind to a cell with an MHC2 molecule, 
It will then stimulate the cell to downregulate the production of CD8. This cell will become a helper T cell. Helper T cells are characterized by the presence of CD4. So we're downregulating CD8 and making sure to have that CD4, this becomes a helper T cell. Now if a T cell CD8 molecule happens to bind to a cell with the MHC1 molecule, then that cell will be stimulated to downregulate the production of CD4 and that cell will develop into a cytotoxic T cell. This is kind of a random process. It's just a situation where whatever it binds to will determine what is expressed, what is reduced, and essentially what it becomes. And now we have our mature helper T cells and our cytotoxic T cells that get released into the lymphatic system so that they can do what they do. But the question is, what exactly do they do? And how exactly do they do it? And that's what we're gonna start digging into in the next videos. And I'll see you over there.